What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical American guy here today to learn and react to the history of Norway. Now, it may seem silly, and I think it's downright reprehensible, it's not good, but Americans really don't know much of anything about Norway. And it's, it's nothing against Norway. We, America, we don't know much about any other nations, sadly, at least the ones that don't make the news or don't directly affect our day-to-day -day life very often. We're very, you know, we can be very selfish and self-centered and we just want to know what's affecting us. Or, and maybe it's, a, maybe it's a bad look on our educational system, but we don't learn very much about European countries such as Norway during our school education upbringing. And it's so important because the world is more connected than ever before, especially thanks to the internet. We're on the internet right now for crying out. I exist on the internet. I can't escape. No. <laughs> okay, okay. I got settled down a little bit here. But really, uh, I am fascinated with how much little I know because I want, I want to rectify that. I want to learn about Norway. So hopefully this video here will offer sort of a brief introduction and understanding of the history of Norway and how, to got, how it got to where it is right now. That'd be great. And I am very interested to see what this says. So without further ado, let's check it out. Anyway, up to fjords, northern lights, and even more fjords. This Fjords? Fjords? What is a fjord? F I'm not sure how to spell that. Fjord? Ah, how do you spell this? Oh, I got it. Long, narrow inlet with steep, steep sides or cliffs? Wow, they look really cool. Oh, as in Norway and Iceland. <laughs> uh, it's right there on the dictionary definition. Who knew? Okay. That's very interesting. My my video is having trouble Norway. here. Up to fjords. Okay. The millenniums, lights, and even more fjords. Wow. This is the history of Norway. Okay. After millenniums covered in ice, the coast of Norway became ice-free, and the first migrators were nomadic people living of sailing, hunting, and fishing along the coast. Hold on. When it was covered in ice, we got people, the first people migrating there. And the of Norway. After millenniums covered in ice, the coast of Norway became ice-free. And the first migrators were nomadic people living of sailing, hunting, and fishing along the coast. Okay, when it, when the ice melted after the Ice Age, and people were able to sail and fish, they started exploring what would be Norway. Okay, got it. Farming was eventually introduced, and during the Nordic Bronze Age, the yields increased what? and trading began. What? The Celts introduced ironworking, setting the stage for the Iron Age. The social okay. structure also changed. Extended families became clans, and conflicts resolved in a thing. We're really going back here. My god, <laughs> my god. When we said we were talking about the history of Norway, we are going way back, which is fine. That's great. A sacred place where men from the surrounding area would gather and determine fitting punishment for crimes. So farmers became powerful and rose to chieftains. They hired soldiers, creating a hird, enabling them to rule over large areas. Okay. Both the Norwegians and their neighbors were proficient as shipbuilders and had spent- Shipbuilders? That's pretty cool. Um, America certainly is not known for anything like that specific in terms of historical craftsmanship. So to be ship shipbuilding, masters of shipbuilding is actually pretty cool. And generations upon generations building and using ships. This eventually resulted in the development of the longship. This ship ah. was a master of all trades, and set the stage for a new part of both Norwegian and Scandinavian history, the Viking Age. Using the Viking Age, that's another thing. Uh, there's lots of Viking TV shows, Americans love Vikings. We think Vikings are the coolest, they are badass, they're awesome, they're mighty and powerful, strong and uh, passionate. But I never, no American quite understands what Vikings encompass. So when I think of Norway, I do believe there is a connection to Vikings. It's just I don't know the details. I don't quite understand. 
Crossing the longboats, the Norwegians explored and colonized several islands, likely motivated by the lack of suitable farmland in parts of Norway and the will to explore. During this time, Norway okay. was divided into several small petty kingdoms. Legend has it that one of these kings, Harald Fairhair, unified all of Norway after his marriage prospect, Judah Eriksdotter, challenged him to do so before she would marry him. What? So, Norway was originally divided up into several sects, kingdoms, several, inhab several regions, if you will. And then, according to this legend? Or is this true? That this king, uh, single-handedly under his rule, unified all of Norway? That's pretty amazing, if that is true. Because his wife, because his fiancé told him to? She'd be impressed by it? That's that's one reason to do it, I guess. <laughs> I'll just unite a whole nation to impress you, okay. But, honestly, that's pretty amazing. The uh, I wonder if that was done through battle and struggle, or if the regions of Norway were already kind of ready to come together and unify. After his marriage prospect, Judah Eriksdotter challenged him to do so before she would marry him. This marks the beginning of the Kingdom of Norway. Okay. The rulers after Harald had to contend with strong regional leaders and Danes, and in the late 10th century, the spread of Christianity also became an important political issue. Okay, that's kind of true for so many parts of the world, right? The spread of Christianity became uh, very important in lots of... It's, it makes sense that it's part of Norway's history as well. Hailes King in 995, Olaf Tryggvason, quickly proceeded to convert Norway to Christianity using all means at his disposal. But King yeah. Olaf had acquired several enemies during his meteoric rise to power. It climaxed. This guy, I'm sorry, but this video, <laughs> I can't ignore it any longer. This video has the funniest little animations and pictures that pop up, pop up, like this bear and these axes. I like it. <laughs> I don't mind it. It's entertaining. When Olaf got ambushed in the Sea Battle of Svalder, in this battle, Olaf had 11 ships pitted against more than 70 ships belonging to Denmark, Sweden, and the Yards of Leda. Olaf's ships what? fell one after one, fighting to the last in his legendary ship, the Long Serpent until he leaped into the ocean to never be seen again. Okay, so they did not win this battle. I mean, they were outnumbered like 10 to 1, right? In 1015, Olaf Haraldsson, later known as Saint Olaf, represented the, the descendants of Harald Fairhair and returned from one of his Viking trips and was immediately elected. Okay, I don't think he's gonna explain to me Vikings. Viking... Viking definition. Google, help me, please. <laughs> I need Google to bail me out. Please, teach me. Any of the Scandinavi Scandinavian seafaring pirates and traders in the 8th to 11th centuries. So, if uh, Norway is Scandinavian, they would fall under this. Seafaring pirates is and traders who raided and settled. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Goes along with my b very basic understanding of Vikings, anyway. To this king of Norway. He ruled Norway successfully for many years, much due to the Danes being occupied with fighting in England. Okay. However, in 1028, the Danish king, Knut the Great, allied the Jarls of Leda, forcing Olaf into exile. Olaf returned to reclaim his throne, and the last Lord Jarl drowned. But his ambitions was cut short as he was killed in Trondelag, and the Danes gained control over Norway. Oh, <laughs> oh. so this was like a thousand years ago, uh, when this guy was exiled and returned, but then was killed in battle. Very interesting. The end of Danish overlordship came in 1035, when Magnus the Good returned to Norway and became king of an independent Norway. The half-brother okay. of Saint Olaf, Harald Harde, had fled after Olaf got killed, but he returned in 1045, bringing large amounts of riches and knowledge gained from serving the Byzantine Emperor. That's interesting. He left for a while and then returned. His brother returned with all this wealth? Man, what was he out there doing? What was he... How did he... He just went off, got rich, and gained world experience under the Byzantine Empire, if I am hearing correctly? And just returned and uh, 
became a uh, king with all this newfound power and wisdom. Something like that. That's fascinating. ...of riches and knowledge gained from serving the Byzantine Emperor. Harold shared his riches with Magnus to become co-ruler. And when Okay, become co-ruler. Uh, by sharing all this wealth and information. Okay. When Magnus died a few years later, Harold became the sole ruler. During his rule, he founded the city of Oslo, which is the modern-day capital of Norway. Oh, okay. Oslo is when an American thinks of Norway, they have a decent chance of <laughs> knowing at least the, the city of Oslo. I would not have been able to tell you it was its capital necessarily, but since it's the only Norwegian city I'm really aware of, I would have guessed that. So that's that's a little insight into kind of what a typical American might think of Oslo or know about Oslo. Following a claim on the English throne, he invaded England with a fleet of 300 ships. Wait, Norway invaded England? Really? That's... I didn't know that. When the Norwegian army traveled towards York, the English army caught them by surprise, and the Norwegians were defeated, and Harold was killed in the bloody battle of Stamford Bridge. Oh, wow. So they were not successful. Think of how history would have changed if Norway had invaded England successfully here. And Harold? Harold? And the Norwegians were defeated, and Harold was- Harold? And if Harold wasn't killed, how history would have changed? There's so many- It's amazing to think how many things like that happened, and which way battles went. Countless, countless things like that, that determined our history up till now. It's kind of mind-blowing to think about, but you could just- You could just get lost in that thought forever, and then <laughs> I'd never finish this video killed in the bloody battle of Stamford Bridge. The now weakened British army was defeated by William the Conqueror two weeks later, forever changing the fate of England. Yeah. One can only wonder what would have happened if Harold had defeated the British army. Yeah. Following <laughs> the end of the Viking Age, Norway saw more focus on the country's own resources. Thousands of farms were established and the country was quite peaceful. Okay. However, in 1030, a period of civil war broke out due to unclear succession laws. Ah, oh, civil war. I mean, many, many developing nations back in the day, and kind of, re and recently, and very recently, uh, in the not too distant history, have had bouts of civil war. It's totally something many, many countries go through, so interesting to know that Norway experienced that as well. After defeating his last internal rival in 1240, Håkon Håkonsson introduced clear succession laws and stabilized the country, setting the stage for Norway's golden age. This time saw an extension of Norway's border, a union with Sweden. For what? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Håkon Håkonsson introduced clear succession laws and stabilized the country, setting the stage for Norway's golden age. Golden age. Golden Age. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't. I had to stop it. I just didn't. I couldn't quite understand that word. Uh, for Norway's Golden Age. This time saw an extension of Norway's border, a union with Sweden, and the culture and diplomatic ties to the rest of Europe increased. However, this. A union with Sweden? Wait. What? 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 Sweden. What? It's golden Age. This time saw an extension of Norway's border, a union with Sweden, and the culture and diplomatic ties to the. So, wait, this is not a little thing. This is huge. Norway and Sweden were unified at one point, and then they must have separated at another point in time. This is the kind of thing. This is, this is probably so important to Norwegian history. Every Norwegian knows this history, and yet Americans are not aware of these super critical important events that determine really important, centrally important countries in the world. Anyway, I'm glad I know now. Very interesting. The rest of Europe increased. However, this would soon all change. In the summer of 1349, <laughs> okay. a ship arrived in Bergen, bringing the Black Death to Norway. The pandemic hit Norway hard and killed a third of the population during the uh. first year, and killed several more in the years after. Right, the Black Death. We have heard about that. 
Uh, I'm pretty certain it struck many, many countries. I didn't know it had such a devastating effect on Norway. A third of the population. Imagine. Uh, obviously, we've all gone through something very similar to that in the last few years, but it wasn't a third of the population. My God. That's madness. That's horrible. Several farms were left completely desolated, which lowered the price of land, which again made it hard for the landowners, and estate taxation dropped to a minimum. Hmm. The Hansa established themselves in several Norwegian cities during this period. Yeah, so, big surprise, Norway had a lot of economic problems after a third of the population was killed by a disease. Uh, pretty understandable. Oh my gosh. They distributed dried fish to other parts of Europe, enabling commercial fishing, an industry okay. that still remains strong in modern-day Norway. Oh. Between 1369 and 1536, okay. Norway became part of Kalmar Union, a union joining the kingdoms of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway under a single monarch. What? What? This is, an, this is like uh, unifying with Sweden, it's similar. How I didn't know this, that they're jo joining with Denmark and what else? Of Kalmar Union, a union joining the kingdoms of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway under a single monarch. Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Is it going to explain maybe where Scandinavia, that term, comes from? Because I believe that encompasses those countries, right? Something like that, actually. Hold on. Scan. De. Navia. What is this? Uh, the Northern Europe. Duh. Most commonly refers to Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Yes. Okay. I'm learning. I'm getting it. It's all becoming clear to me. Slowly. But Denmark as the de facto leader. Okay. Sweden eventually broke free from the Union, ending the Kalmar Union. Even ah. though they tried, Norway was too weak to break off from the Union with Denmark. Also, okay. when the Reformation spread to Scandinavia, it was implemented on Danish initiative, rendering the Norwegians even weaker as it now lost the church land to the Danish crown. Wow. Norway's previously well-functioning state system was almost gone at this point, reducing Norway to Denmark's puppet state. Wait, wait, what did this say? The land seized by Denmark was around 40% of the land in Norway? So if we look at that today. Did that, uh, did that end up being permanent? Was Norway once, um, bigger into, oh, sorry, Denmark? How? I'm a little confused about that, but maybe I, I can learn here. State system was almost gone at this point, reducing Norway to Denmark's puppet state. Okay. The 17th century saw a boost of the Norwegian mining and timber industries. However, Denmark's many wars with, for example, Sweden, led to heavy taxations on Norway. Ah. Denmark-Norway was forced into the Napoleonic Wars when the British attacked the Danish fleet. The Danes lost the war and were forced to cede Norway to Sweden in the Treaty of Kiel in 1814. Oh, so they lost that war and Den Denmark-Norway, Denmark had to uh, give up, for lack of a better word, separate from Norway and it was once again Norway, Sweden. This is a really interesting history. This is very active, lots of things going on, lots of changing of the hands and changing of the uh, geopolitical landscape. My goodness, this is a very interesting history. The Norwegians tried to obtain independence, but was forced into a rather loose union with Sweden, where Norway established their own constitution. For oh. many, this marks the beginning of the modern Norwegian state. Okay, so Norway kind of developed a constitution, like America did when we became independent from Great Britain. Uh, and Norway did this about 200 years ago? Okay. And the Norwegians celebrate the date this constitution was signed every year. Okay. Due to medical advancements, the population rose significantly during the 19th century leading ah. to a need to modernize the agricultural sector. Sure. Still, more than 750,000 Norwegians traveled to the land of opportunity. The union was... Today, there are around the same, same amount of Norwegians in America as in Norway. So what's the Norwegian population? Nor... 
way pop elation. Thank you, Google, please. <laughs> uh, five million? So there's five million Norwegians in America? That's pretty cool. Sweden ended in 1005 after some cleverness from the Norwegian government, and Norway became an independent kingdom with its own monarch for the first time in 550 years. Okay. The following years saw an industrialization boom. Also, several social laws were introduced. So, Norway was a monarchy at that point in time, with like a king and queen? I didn't know that. The following years saw an industrialization boom. Also, okay. several social laws were introduced, helping secure the rights of workers. Okay. Norway remained neutral during the First World War. During oh, I didn't, yeah. Yeah, because uh, we certainly aren't taught anything about Norway's involvement in World War I, uh, because they were neutral. Interesting. In the interwar period, Norway experienced both economic and political hardship, but eventually the Norwegian Labour Party managed to establish a dominant position and introduced many actions to better the Norwegian economy. Okay. Norway once again proclaimed neutrality when the Second World War broke out. But okay. Nazi Germany invaded Norway in 1040, and after a few months of fighting, Norway capitulated and remained under German occupation throughout the war. The post-war huh. period was a period of growth and political stability. So, Norway was kind of forced into a little bit of World War II when they were literally attacked by Germany. Wow. Laying the foundations, oh. the post-war period was a period of growth and political stability, laying the foundations for a modern welfare state. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to modern history now. Uh, pretty close. The discovery of large oil reserves in the late 1960s set the stage for a new industry in Norway. Oh. And through well-executed politics, the Norwegian state has been able to benefit greatly from the Norwegian oil industry. Okay. Discovering oil deposits in Norway has helped uh, with trade and their economy, creating a whole, you know, oil economy, I imagine, with Norway and all of Europe and probably more. Very interesting. Okay. Due to politics, the Norwegian state has been able to benefit greatly from the Norwegian oil industry. Yeah. The 1970s saw the rise of both environmental and women rights movements. Oh, good. The economy got deindustrialized and higher education became commonplace. During the 90s, Norway saw increased liberalism, more privatization, and the solidification of a strong and diverse economy. As a result, the 2008 financial crisis almost had no impact on Norway. Wow, the 2000 the 2008 financial crisis had an enormous to say the least, an enormous effect on the U.S. Uh, economy, obviously. And, uh, well, maybe not obviously to Norwegians, but Americans certainly are familiar with how hard that was. And uh, it just shows how much financial strength and economic strength and independence Norway has to really feel no effect of that. That's very impressive. In 2011, Norway experienced a major terror attack from a lone wolf right-wing extremist, which claimed 77 lives in total. Wow. I didn't know that. That's horrible. That's, that's horrible. Wow. Today, the population of Norway is around 5 million, and Norway is considered the most developed and democratic country in the world. Wow. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> no big, no big deal. Uh, most developed and democratic countries in the world. That's fantastic. Amazing. They also have the world's largest sovereign wealth fund. From humble okay. beginnings towards greatness and then to downfall and submission and to greatness again. That yeah. was the history of Norway. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> that was a ride. That was wild. My goodness. I had no idea the history of Norway was so fascinating. It really, like he said in the video, was up and down and up and down and unifying and separating again and unifying and getting independence and uh, then establishing itself as one of the most powerful nations on the planet. Like, <laughs> kind of an interesting story, right? Uh, this is absolutely a story that Americans should know more. This is fascinating. 
Um, I'm learning more and more about Norway's importance in the world economy and really what a powerful nation it is. I actually made a video before this about explaining a bit of that about Norway's economic power and uh, how it's positioned itself in the world economy. It's all very fascinating, very impressive. I really love what I've seen of Norway so far. It's really so interesting and so great, and it uh, seems pr like a pretty awesome place. Uh, anyway, if you, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this reaction, feel free to give it a like or a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, where I'll be learning more about Norway, culture, and history, and news, and all sorts of things, feel free to subscribe for more videos. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.